Hello, hello. So welcome to this little series of uh, videos on supplements. It has grown into a little series already because there are so many things that we need to discuss. So over the course of the next few days, weeks, I will try and answer as many questions as possible on supplements, what to take, how to take them, how much to take, etc, etc. So um, this first chapter, if you will, on this series is um, about is setting the scene, right? Um, so I want to spend some time talking about supplements um, and the industry uh, because I think once you have this knowledge, it will uh, switch off a number of questions um, that you might be having about which brand, why are there so many differences in prices, um, etc, etc. So let's set the scene. The first thing to say about supplements is they are considered as a food, um, as a food item. So they're not regulated by any medical agencies or, or, or anything. In fact, they're not regulated at all. Um, anyone can register and become a supplement provider. Um, and in fact, it is very simple to start a supplement business. I could do it in about a week or a month if I wanted to, um, which I don't. I'll tell you why in a minute. So there exists a number of wholesale supplements suppliers, um, providers, they, they manufacture them. And then what you do is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the um, concept of white labeling and drop sh shipping. So um, effectively I could just design my logo, my labels, decide what I wanted to sell, um, get in touch with these drop shippers and say, right, can you stick Melita Fitness on this brand of, uh, on this pill? Um, sells 60 in a pot for 20 pounds um, and, and bish bash bosh it is actually really very very simple to set up you know you, you decide on your on your look and feel create a website if you want to otherwise they can provide one for you list it on amazon if you want to or list it in links and instagram and it's as easy as that to start selling i would never ever have to see a single pill i would never see a, a pot or anything um it would you know from my link it would directly be handled by the drop shipping company um they would stick the label on the pots uh send it out and that's it and um, the reason of course uh that i don't i'm not going to do that is because you need a large following um to make a lot of money uh, out of this right so your your margins are going to be quite small so you, so it's a numbers game you need to be selling lots of these pots in order to make a living out of it unless you happen to be very good at um, Instagram sales or Amazon sales, which I'm not. Anyway, I digress. So that's kind of, um, by telling you about this, this is kind of to understand that actually the number of wholesale suppliers or manufacturers is actually quite small. Um, but the number of brands that you see on Amazon anytime you're looking for curcumin or magnesium is vast. This is because anybody can decide that they're going to sell their own brand of whatever supplement it is okay um and it also explains why there are so many differences in prices um because it, it's all down to marketing right so you could be your cheap and cheerful curcumin at 9.99 or you could position yourself as a bit of a premium brand all natural blah 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 and sell yourself for more um but ultimately understand this that supplements are coming from a very very narrow uh, narrow source um, originally and then they field out into lots and lots of micro brands some brands are much bigger than others um, but, but there you go um, so following on to that understand that all the words you see in a supplement website or the labels are mostly just marketing spiel. There are no regulated words. There is no restrictions on the words that you can use like natural or high premium or quality. It, it is nothing. You can just choose whatever words you want, except actually uh, food grown, which I realized um, is a trademark now. One of the brands we were discussing on the WhatsApp One Nutrition has food grown as a registered trademark. Um, I'm sure that's going to be contested at some point, but currently they're the only ones that can use food grown um, in their spiel. Um, so once you realise that all these words don't actually mean anything, um, and once you realise that all of your supplements are coming mostly from the same um, limited number of sources, 
um, you start to realize that actually there isn't that much of a difference between um, you know magnesium brand A, B and C that you see on Amazon. So hopefully that starts to simplify it a little bit. Um, so the things that's going to define your price is uh, your marketing, the positioning of the brand, but also there is some uh, difference in the makeup of the brands, of the supplement, right? So there are two uh, distinctions really. One is your natural and one is your synthetic. So synthetic is quite easy. It means it's grown in a lab, right? It's not grown in a lab, it's produced in a lab. Um, and it starts off from chemical compounds, really not anything that you might consider to be food. So that's your synthetic. Um, your natural would start from a food item. Um, omega-3 is a good example of that. So omega-3 typically comes from a kind of fish, salmon, mackerel, not really salmon actually, pollock, uh, mackerel, sardines are, are the common ones used for uh, omega-3. Um, and when you've got a food grown nutrient like magnesium, it's typically coming originally from some food, but let's not kid ourselves. It's grown into a paste um, in a lab and is uh, refined and altered and processed in several steps, hopefully quite nice, kind ways that don't involve chemicals and bleaching and whatnot, but they are equally highly processed. So although the distinction between natural and synthetic is made up to be great in, um, uh, in the marketing spiel, as mentioned, in reality, I don't think there is too much of a difference between one and the other. Um, and what might be more useful is making sure that the, they are chemically identical to what is originally in nature, right? So making sure that your magnesium molecularly is exactly the same as magnesium you might find in your kale or your spinach. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm losing you guys already. Okay, let's move on. So next thing I wanted to talk about is the science around supplements. Um, and it's safe to say that the science between the science supporting use of supplements is extremely woolly. Yeah, unfortunately, it's quite woolly, but you, you can kind of understand why it's very difficult to isolate the cause or the effect of taking a supplement on an individual, right? Because you know, if you're taking magnesium and you're suddenly feeling that you're sleeping a lot better, is it because of the magnesium or is it because of a stressor that has suddenly go, gone away? Or is it because you're making a better effort to go to bed at the right time? Or is it because you have not drunk for the month whilst you've been conducting this trial? It is really difficult to isolate the effects on an individual. A, a study requires, a study to understand the benefits of a supplement requires everything else to remain the same. And in life, it is impossible for everything else to remain the same during the um, period of the study. So as a result, there's a lot of contradictions. Um, there's you know, some people who are completely against um, supplements and some people who are completely pro. Um, what I'm talking about here is the balance of my opinion based on being in this industry for well over a decade. Um, it's my experiences personally, as well as experiences with my clients. Um, and it's also the experience of people I know and trust and follow and study um, who have more resources than, than I do to throw at this particular subject. OK, so um, on that next note, I don't understand it all. You will not and should not expect to understand all about the subject of supplements. It is vast and it's ever changing. And, you know, there's always new science, new studies coming out, which may um confirm or negate your opinion um, and I think the point of this is you can do something and try to reap the rewards or the benefits of it or you can tie yourself up in knots trying to understand everything and probably uh, end up with a little bit of what's it called analysis paralysis okay so um, I would say you know try to be a little bit comfortable with your um, you know, try to be a little bit comfortable with the unexplained or the unknown or the not completely um, well understood. Um, 
because you know some issues like how to best time it how to make sure best buyer avail availability and right? there are just things that if you've got if it's your industry profession you should do well to understand but for everybody else we just need to get on and do something the next thing to talk about is the safety or otherwise of um supplements um, so with the exception of a couple of things, or a handful of things, uh, which I'll talk about in detail when we get to talking about individual supplements, they are extremely, extremely safe. Um, in most cases, supplements have a, a maximum safety dose, which is kind of up here. This is the dosage that um, you should not be, that should not be exceeded at any point. Um, but that is very different to the recommended dosage that people will, that you know, suppliers will write on the back of their labels, which is here, right? And so bear in mind that, you know, if I've started my supplement company, the last thing I want is somebody to come and say, oh, I've had too much um, vitamin D and now my skin turns purple. Um, it won't, but anyway, um, and so I'm going to sue you, right? So they go way, way, way below the maximum safety dose. Um, but to some, in, in some cases, I think uh, that's actually too low, um, and so it wouldn't necessarily be enough to uh, make a difference. So this is why you will find sometimes that there's a discrepancy between what I recommend and what the man, the suppliers say on the back of their labels. But be aware that whatever I say you know, you should have a little bit more, it's going to be nowhere near the maximum safety dose. So I have checked all of this, um, uh, of course. And, and so there, there, is that, there is that big, big, big gap between the recommended and the maximum. And I think we should be somewhere here as opposed to kind of down there where you're just taking something and it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. So that's your, that's one thing to talk about. The second thing is, even if you did go above the maximum safety dose, not much is going to happen because um, they are very, very safe. Most of these things would just get weed out, assuming you've got f normally func functioning in in insides. Um, and or things like omega-3, if you're having too much omega-3, it will be stored as fat. Well, let's face it, you were talking about two or three grams of fat, right? So it's not really going to make any difference. Um, having said all of that, um, if you are on any specific medication, um, you may, you should probably ask your GP um, about supplements, any supplements you want to take. Um, I hesitate there because I don't actually think GPs are well placed to tell you whether um, a supplement is going to interfere with your medication um, and I know it is that way around, so a supplement may interfere with your medication, making it more or less potent. I'll give you some examples and i say. So I was saying, I'm not entirely sure GPs are well equipped to make that decision, and so they may just end up saying, oh, I just don't take it, um, which to me is probably not the best approach because you could be missing out on some good benefits of the supplements. Um, so the things that spring to mind um, are things like blood thinners, uh, so blood thinners like warfarin um, and curcumin, for example. Curcumin is an extremely safe and uh, very, very useful supplement, which we will talk about soon. Um, but it can cause, can, we don't know for sure, it may cause um, blood to thin. So if you are taking curcumin and warfarin, you might find out that your um, blood is getting too thin um, and so what you should therefore be doing is monitoring your levels of warfarin right because you could then uh, assumedly be taking less if your curcumin is helping that uh, medication to be more effective. Another one that springs to mind is um, thyroid medication um, things like iron and calcium may affect how well you absorb your thyroid medication um, and so again you would do well to perhaps um, either spread your medication away from your supplements um, or monitor whether you know, it is having an effect at all. Um, so if you're in doubt let me know um, and I can tell you what I think um, and ask your GP if you have a GP that you consider to be um, helpful and knowledgeable um, and up to date with his knowledge, his or her knowledge. Uh, okay, there we go. I think that's all we need to say on that. Um, 
where else just just one last thing um for this already quite lengthy episode one supplements right the clue is in its name um you cannot you cannot out supplement a bad diet or a bad lifestyle right so as good as curcumin is for anti-inflammation if you're eating a bunch of shite it's not going to make a blind bit of difference in your infl inflammation if you take um, as many curcumin as you want as good as magnesium is to help you sleep if you're going to bed at one o'clock every morning no magnesium in the world is going to help you wake up um feel recovered when you when you wake up so um it is there to help plug some holes in what is already a good lifestyle and nutrition um but don't expect to just take some pills and it's everything to be better so first of all fix your lifestyle fix your nutrition and then use supplements as as a way to get up to the next level when you have you know, realistically um, already done most of the work in transforming your lifestyle and nutrition. Okay, I think that is all for episode one. Um, I will return in maybe when I've had a little break um, and talk on some of the top three, maybe four or five supplements that I recommend, why I recommend them and how much you take of them. All right then, bye-bye-bye.